We've all had that experience of driving downtown Denver. You see the people on the corner asking for help. They're there, they need help. I'm here, I can help. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Just because I'm losing doesn't mean I'm lost. I felt really alone, but I didn't know who could help me. What do you do? Things got so bad. I've given up hope. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know who I was. He's asking for help. I didn't know what to do. What do you do? But I knew I needed help. I just got lost. They're there. They need help. I was in need of something and I didn't know what. I'm here. I can help. We all wonder where we can help and wonder how we can best respond. Where can we give? And I didn't know who could help me. How can I help? What can we do? that can make a difference. What does the future have for me? How do we help him? In the past, I thought that's a great question, but now I know the answer. This. This. Is my road. This is my road. This is my road. This is our road. This is my road. Is our road. To Providence. My road to Providence. This road. about a you know half a gallon of vodka a day and uh, living in and out of motels um, at one point I lived in the woods for six months and it's a very isolating disease and I, I would say I, I talk to my parents once or twice a year during the peak of my addiction and, and that breaks my heart my mom was going to counseling every week to deal with the loss of me I finally hit rock bottom when uh, you know I woke up one morning and I'm I'm in a motel. There's empty bottles all around the motel. The place is trashed, shaking violently. I'm th I'm throwing up. It got to where that was a regular thing every morning. I mean you're so physically addicted to, to alcohol. The heat's been off. It's the middle of winter. I have a broken foot. I have uh, bruises from head to toe. It was absolutely hopeless. The only way out was he was either suicide or drinking myself or using to death. There was no way to hide anymore that I had a problem. Yeah. So I, I decided to scrape up the change to walk the block and a half to uh, to the payphone. I called my parents and uh, and they got the call they'd always been praying for that I, I wanted to get some help. The payphone was right at the liquor store, and I, I, uh, you know, I had a little bit more money, and I, I didn't buy a bottle then. You know, I was determined. And I just said a prayer instead. I hadn't prayed a lot at that point. Uh, it was sort of new to me. I asked God for both for forgiveness and for to help me on this road, which seemed absolutely impossible, but it wasn't with God, and. Uh, you know, that's how I began my road to Providence. I ask why this road, why this way, and this load. I had met this man um, at my job. Immediately, we started living together. And I knew something wasn't right. Um, I didn't know what, it's just, like, this isn't right. I think it was after three months, I found that I was pregnant. My boyfriend and his mother wanted me to have an abortion. Um, took me to several doctors and said, you will have an abortion, you're gonna do this. I was just like, what do I do? Over a period of time, he grew through drinking and through drugs, just very abusive. Very, very abusive, physically, mentally, um, beaten. Like, I'm gonna make you pay for deciding to keep this baby. I remember I was six or seven months pregnant, and there was a stairway of about 30 steps straight down. And he had pushed me down the steps, and I remember just laying there thinking, like, why? Like, what, what, why would you do that? I think it was after I had my son, the last straw for me was when he had punched me in the head several times, um, gashed my eye open, 
and I was bleeding everywhere and I fell on the floor and I caught a reflection of myself in the TV. And I just saw how gashed and how um, bruised and how just bloody my whole face was. And it caught me off guard and the baby began to cry. I really, I really believe that me or my son was gonna die that night. And I remember just thinking like, I have to, I have to protect this baby. So this is Andy. He's the reason why I knew I needed to leave that night. And that I needed to make a change. That's what set me on the road to Providence. My road led to Providence after working in social service programs for about 15 years. Good programs that helped a lot of people. What I saw again and again were people who had come from generational cycles of poverty, abuse, and addiction. And while I was able to help them with food stamps, housing vouchers, and bus tokens, it never seemed like it was what they really needed to turn their lives around. What I have found through the years and what I know for sure is that in order to transform and thrive, what people really need is to experience unconditional love, hope, safe accountability, and they need to live together in community. And that is why my road led to Providence Network. And not just for me, Providence Network is the place where the roads of many converge. It's where the roads of those saying, where can I go, or who can help me, meet the roads of many good Samaritans saying, how can I help, or what can I do? These questions both find their answer on the road to Providence. So you might be thinking, what can I do? What we're finding is that the face of giving has changed. It's not just individuals. We are blessed by couples, small groups, churches, and companies who have come alongside Providence Network and changed what it looks like to give. One of my favorite examples of this is our partnership with Bud's Warehouse. Our mission directly intersects their mission. Our mission at Bud's Warehouse is to partner with the church to create businesses that employ folks that are rebuilding lives from addiction, homelessness, prison. And it's just a real natural partnership to work with Providence Network where they provide the housing side for folks that are rebuilding lives and then we're able to provide the comprehensive job training services. Unless business people, unless um, entrepreneurs step up and create opportunities for folks, um, society pretty much shuts them out. In order to heal and transform, you need both a job and you need a place to live and one of the things that we see is just a higher level of success because of this partnership. Our vision is to uh, present living proof of a loving God to a watching world. When we learned about Providence Network and Joy House specifically we thought what a better place to do that. For the last 10 years we have been going down once a month and we bring dinner. Sometimes we may have a cooking class, sometimes a Bible study, different things to teach them value of, of being a woman really. Different roads have brought us to Joy House but we have so much in common because we're women and we uh, love our children. We have gone through some of the same things they've mm -hmm. gone through. And most of them are young enough to be our daughters <laughs> and uh, uh, we Think of them as our daughters. Serving together always um, bonds you, it gives you um, a common goal. We get as much out of it as they do. Nancy and I have chosen to uh, be corporate sponsors and the reason we have is because I knew that the money was going to the right place and so you know as a business person it's, it's important to me to know that our funds are really hitting the road. And when you go in and just see it firsthand, like I have, you're just, you're just amazed at what is happening in these homes with so little. And the money is well spent. I've watched Nancy over the years as she's given her time. And, you know, when it comes to me, I've been waiting for this perfect time to show up. One of these days, work's going to slow down. Well, I think the truth of the matter is it's not going to. The gift is already there. God's given me the ability to make money. And so that's my response. And the blessings from doing this just come when we look around the room and we see people like Andy and Lori. You know everything that I've been reading lately they all come to this every time. What are you doing with your money? What are you doing with your time? You got to support the widows and the orphans and you know our homeless people to us are orphans. First John 317 says if anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him how can the love of God be in him? 
This work is important and rewarding, but we cannot do it without your help. Um, I would say to people who have a business or people who are in small groups or individuals or families, there's ways to think bigger than just yourself. There's ways to get involved and create opportunity for folks in the city who are rebuilding lives. At Providence Network, lives are truly changed from the inside out. I've seen it firsthand and it's a beautiful thing. The road to Providence can be challenging and difficult. There are twists, turns, bumps, and potholes, but it has amazing potential. We are blessed to witness what can happen when those who need help meet with those who can help on that providential road and lives are transformed. Looking back now, it's really night and day uh, how much my life's changed. After spending um, two years of wonderful healing here at Providence House, I was able to move into their um, sober living apartments called Victory House, which um, I think is really important for the the transition phase where you, you start to, to get some more freedom and to have that support system follow you was absolutely key for me. I was able to get enrolled in school, go in pre-med, you know, 3.4 GPA. I have a good job that I enjoy and I have uh, good friends that are supportive of, of my sobriety. I have a good network of people here that have stuck with me after I graduated the program. I am a changed life. Since being at Providence Network, um, my life drastically changed in ways I would have never imagined. I've been able to hold and maintain my job while I'm able to be a good mother, I'm able to be a responsible adult, and to make wise decisions and not um, go back into things that I know aren't good. And the impact that it's had on Andy, I've seen Andy grow in ways that um, have been incredible. And I'm so grateful for Providence Network and all that they've done for me. I really needed somebody to fight for me instead of against me. And just to be in my corner and to be an encouragement to, and just to come alongside me and just to, to be my friend. I really needed a friend. And I have a lot of friends now. You know, I think what's different um, with Providence Network and other programs uh, is the focus on developing a personal relationship with Christ. It keeps me interlocked with these people that have held me accountable and have lifted me up and that I can look at them too and see the work that God's doing in their lives and how that gives me hope to want to keep going. What excites me now is to be able to um, give back and to change lives as, as they changed mine. Many people have given to me things that I could never ever repay back, ever, um, but just say thank you. Uh, thank you. For, for giving me my life back. I don't wake up in the morning anymore and, and want to die. It's, it's a beautiful picture to me um, and where this road has led me. Um, when I was just in such despair, I had no hope at all. And now I have a future in front of me. I have a hope and I have dreams now. <laughs> Things that I can do and I can... And I know I can do it because I'm not alone. And I have Providence Network and the people there that give me hope. I'm so grateful that I got on the road that led to Providence. You got